The opening scientific session is going to be led by Dr. Kamis Alessi from the Islamic University of Gaza. Uh, and Kamis, I would like to hand over to you to lead and introduce this session. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Richard, for these moving words and for your uh, comprehensive coverage of the major role LPHO has been drawing. And thank you very much for being a strong supporter of all our work. Thank you very much. Uh, in this session, we are going to cover uh, two papers on the issue of Great March of Return, which for our kind viewers have started in 2018 and continued through 2019. So we have two speakers. We have Dr. Najla Abu Jami from the Ministry of Health, and we have Dr. Aya Abu Kamar from the Islamic University. So our first speaker will speak about the pain track infections in the Gaza Strip incidence risk factors and prevention strategies a cross-sectional study and uh, you have 15 minutes to cover your presentation go ahead please assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh hello everyone hope you're all doing great I am Najla Musa Abu Jama, Doctor of Medicine at Palestinian Ministry of Health and working at Oncology Department at Irving Gaza Hospital in Palestine. Today, I will present a cross-sectional descriptive study which was conducted on February 2019, entitled by Incidents, Risk Factors Assessment and the Prevention of pen tract Infection of external fixators due to gunshot wounds from the Palestinian Israeli border. So let me start with a team member who had a major role to complete this work uh, Najla Abu Jama, which is me, Isra Al Amassi, Noor Asfam, Hal Assal, Yusra Al Akluk, and Muhammad Ghanem. Also, many thanks for our supervisors, Dr. Fadl Naim. Consultant Orthopedic Surgeon and Dean of Faculty of Medicine at Islamic University of Gaza. Dr. Bettina Butcher, Assistant Professor at Islamic University of Gaza, Palestine. Let our mention our outlines. We will talking about background, aim, methodology of the study, results, interpretation, and recommendation. By starting with background, as you can see in this picture, this picture is for an injured patient in a great march of return event, which weekly take place at the border fence in the Gaza Strip, leading to causalities including lower limb injury. According to WHO, from 30 March 2018 to 30 March 2019, uh, 28,000 Palestinians were injured as a result of clashes with Israeli security forces and 277 were killed, including 52 children. As a classification, 92% were male, 80% were female, and 22% were children under the age of 18. As a breakdown of the 6,872 gunshot wounds reveals that 78.9% were to the lower limbs, 8% to the upper limbs, and 4.2% to the abdomen and pelvis. Regarding to the aim of our study, the aim is to explore the incidence and risk factors of pen tract infections among great march of return patients. Let's um, discuss the methodology. This table explains everything uh, we need to understand the methodology of uh, this research. The type of the study was cross-sectional descriptive study. The sample, our sample was convenience sample. Target patients, patients who had external fixators placed to the lower limb uh, during the Great March of Return events. Number of cases, the total number 
of cases is 265 patients. Inclusion criteria we included to our research all patients who had lower limbs external fixators and the total number was 224 cases. Exclusion criteria we excluded all patients who had internal fixators, all patients who missed medical records, all patients who had a trauma of other parts of the body, such as upper limb, um, head and neck, chest trauma, etc. Study tools, a face-to-face -face interview was conducted with patients who came to the follow-up centers. Then the medical records for these patients were reviewed in the hospitals where patients underwent surgery. Data analysis, we analyzed data uh, using SPSS uh, program version 25, and we analyzed descriptive and logistic regression analysis. So the, fi the findings of, uh, of our study, all 224 patients were included were male. The mean age was 27.4 plus minus 7.6 years. Data collected from nine medical and follow-up centers. We classified the results as uh, for five six sections to understand the results clearly. Uh, social demographic data, statistics, statistics about infection, risk factors, culture and antibiotic, logistic regression analysis, test results. Uh, we will start with social demographic data. As we can see here, uh, about 90.6% of uh, patients included in our study had education for high school or less. Okay, and the majority of patients, the area of residency distributed between Gaza City and Middle Gaza, as you can see from the picture. Statistics about infection, type of external fixator, about 74% of patients had unilateral fixators, and about 83.9% of patients placed the external fixator at the same day of injury. The most uh, common indication for external fixator in our patients was open and community fracture, as we've seen in 86.1% from the patients. Um, according to medical omorbidities, 88.4% of patients has no comorbidity, and this is explained by um, most of our patients included in uh, of patients included in this study were young age. Penetract infection incidence of penetract infection was 51.3%, uh, and the grade of infection in the majority of patients um, uh, was grade one and grade two. Risk factors analysis. About half of our patients were smokers, um, about 41.5% um, associated vascular injury, just in a minimum number, 0.4% of our patients on steroids, um, just 13.4% uh, of our patients had a preoperative antibiotics, 84.8% of our patients had a post-operative antibiotic, which is good. 4.5% had hydroxybutide coated pen. Uh, regarding this contention around pen, 89.3% uh, uh, had appropriate skin tension, and 63.4% the location of pen tract was the ephesian. Uh, the pen site care started at post-operative day one in 64.3% of our patients. Pen site care done every each two days in more than half of our patients. The most used cleaning solution uh, and dressing um, uh, was iodine and normal saline. Patient clean his external fixator by themselves just in 32% of our patients. Let's move to culture and antibiotics. The most common organisms according to culture was the Staphylococcus aureus in 43.4, then Klebsiella and Pseudomonas in 21.7. Uh, equally, then Escherichia coli, um, then Proteus. 
uh, the most common antibiotics used with amikacin and vancomycin um, after culture results. Infection healing after management after one month, most of patients in 43.6, uh, they are healed after one month. Then uh, 22.3 after two months, then decrease until not healed in 11th. 11% uh, from our patients, they are not healed. Um, uh, now, with, um, let's our discuss the results of logistic regression analysis. This table um, shows the result of logistic regression analysis and the results less than 0.05 is considered statistics, statistically significant. And in four factors, which as you can see, smoking and surgeries done immediately after injury, they are carry, carries a less infection rate, pin location, uh, vascular injuries, and the presence of pin tract in an area with considerable soft tissue carries a high risk of pin tract infection, as you can see by this table. It's widely agreed that any strategies for reducing penetrant infection should begin in the operating theater. Complete aseptic technique also is recommended. Let's uh, interpret our results. A systemic review, which evaluated penetrant infection rates for external fixator conducted from 18, uh, 1980 to 2014, found the incidence of infection was rated from 0% to 100%. Suggesting that our results 51.3 might be an average occurrence. And uh, this is an important topic regarding the bin site infection rate. The results didn't include patients with previous penetract infection which if taken into consideration would make the incidence higher than 51%. Uh, also, the high workload in Gaza hospital on some days um, appeared to exert a significant negative impact on infection rates, possibly due to poor observance of surgical site infection preventive measure because of time pressure. Our recommendations, first of all, improve documentation in patients' medical records and develop a system that connects follow-up centers directly with the main hospitals to facilitate patient care and evaluation. Then, because the smoking is considered a risk factor, uh, education for patients to quit smoking is very important to facilitate healing and decrease infection. More studies are required to study this topic with following up the patient since time of injury to time they remove their expects, to have a true and reliable incidence of infection, as well as we need a case control study to study the effect of a treatment on penetrant infection. And by this, we reach to the end of our lecture. Uh, I hope that uh, this added a lot to your information. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Najla, for uh, uh, this uh, lovely presentation, and thank you for uh, adhering to the time schedule. Yeah, we have uh, we have three minutes more. So, if we have before we go to the next presentation, if anybody have any question, please uh, just write it in the chat. Uh, before I see what we have new questions in the chat, I have a question for you. Uh, Dr. Anjla, why did you exclude patients with other injuries to the bodies? Dr. Anjla? Uh, Dr. Hamis, Dr. Najla was not able to join us. So she's not here to answer questions. Oh, sorry. So, so the, so she's not uh, answering questions. Uh, then we can, if if she's not there, maybe we can uh, just go to the second speaker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and just to note that we also have a Q and A session at the end of this session. So okay. after Aya's presentation, we also have a Q and A session. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Probably Najla will join us then, hopefully. Okay, okay, thank you very much, thank you. Then now we'll just move to our uh, second speaker, who is Dr. Aya Kamal Abu Kamar. She's from the Islamic University of Gaza, and she's, she will be speaking about a retrospective study of antimicrobial resistance or bacteria isolated before and after the Great March of Return from Europea and Gaza Hospital. And this issue of antimicrobial resistance is a problemsome issue here in Gaza because of the uh, maybe improper use of antibiotics and uh, giving antibiotics haphazardly and some patients are self-treating. So now I leave the floor to Dr. Aya to speak about this important issue. You have 15 minutes, please, you can go. Hello, everyone. It is Aya Kamal Abu Qamar, and I am a teacher assistant at the Islamic University of Gaza. It is my pleasure to introduce my presentation today, which is a retrospective study antimicrobial resistance of bacteria isolated before and after the Arabian, before and after the Great Return March from the Arabian Gaza Hospital. We all know that antimicrobial agents have a great impact on medicine. They are powerful medicine that fight bacterial infection and have a major impact on the rate of survival. Properly using, they can save lives. They either kill bacteria or keep them from reproducing. Before bacteria can multiply and cause symptoms, even if the symptoms occur, the immune system in our body can kill them by the white blood cells. And if the infection is too harmful and need help, we can use the antimicrobial agents. But people should get it according to medical consultation to prevent antimicrobial resistance. And they have to comply with prescribing physician instruction, even if the health condition is improved. Unfortunately, the post antibiotic disaster began after the series of success achieved by the antibiotics when the bacteria no longer responded to them. At the same time, there was an increase in morbidity and the threats. And it has been noticed that the effectiveness of many antibiotics is decreased due to their misuse and overuse. Unfortunately, antimicrobial resistance is increasingly becoming a worldwide problem. That means bacteria don't respond to antimicrobial agents that may have worked in the past. And this can occur when the bacteria change and modify its characteristics and be able to resist the effect the effects of antimicrobial agents by two ways. The first one by a genetic mutation or by acquiring resistance from another bacterium. This can occur for many reasons, such as one, using antimicrobial agents when you don't need them. Two, not using them properly. Third, using them in viral infection. Also, this has dangerous side effects through create bacteria that are hard to kill or develop diarrhea due to a lack of good bacteria 
that help digest food properly. So the emerge of antimicrobial resistance in all types of pathogenic bacteria is a serious public health threat. It is associated with greater hospital morbidity and mortality and longer duration of hospital stay and thus increases the cost of health care. This retrospective study was launched in the light of a high level of doubts about an increase in the antimicrobial resistance following the beginning of the Great Return March. Where this study aimed to verify these doubts by comparing the rates of increased resistance to antibiotics and identify its resistance patterns by examining the sensitivity six months before the start of the Great Return March and six months after its start. So the specific objective for this study, one, to detect the different isolates of bacterial pathogen from different patient sample. Two, to detect the pattern of bacterial resistance to antimicrobial. Three, to compare between the six month period before and after the great return march. where the study steps included taking permission and ethical approval for access and analysis of, of the data was obtained from the Department of Human Resources Development of Ministry of Health and the Arabian Gaza Hospital, then making an appropriate form to fill in the data. Then going to the Arabian Gaza Hospital in Gaza, collecting the data and dumping it on an Excel sheet. <coughs> Routine microbiology laboratory result of bus and swab culture taken at the, at the Arabian Gaza Hospital between August 2017 and August 2019 were analyzed. Data from 628 isolates from bus and the swab culture from patients who visited various departments at Arabian Gaza Hospital suffering from bacterial infection were analyzed. 310 isolates were recovered before the great return of March, while 308 and 18 after the Great Return March. 192 of them were recovered from injured cases from the Great Return March. And finally, analyzing it statistically by the SBSS program. Here, this figure illustrates that most isolates were cultured from a swab and bus, so I will concentrate on it. After analysis, the results are shown that the predominant gram-negative isolate recovered from bus and the swab culture was Pseudomonas aeruginosa, followed by Clipsilla species, Acinetobacter species, Ebrotias species, and Escherichia coli. And among the gram-positive bacteria, Staphylococcus aureus was the most common, followed by coagulase negative staph.
Pseudomonas aeruginosa exhibited a notable increase in resistance after the great return march against ciproflexacin, cifratexan, gentamicin, azitronin, and mirobinin as illustrated in the figure. While Staphylococcus aureus, their resistance increased after the Great Return March against the clindamycin, ciproflexacin, erythromycin, trimethoprime, and colexillin, and that complicates the treatment. As a result of using antimicrobial drugs has become widespread over several decades, and these drugs have been extensively misused in both humans and food producing animals in ways that favor the selection and the spread of resistant bacteria. Consequently, antibacterial drugs have become less effective or even ineffective, resulting in an accelerating global health security emergency that is rapidly outpacing availability treatment option. As a conclusion in my study, it has been found that there is, is the, that there is a significant increase of resistance of bacteria to most the antimicrobial agents in general and against the most advanced antimicrobial agents like mirubinium after the Great Return March. And this may be due to infection with the new strain which spread easily among patients because of the limited human resources, a huge number of casualties, and improper infection control measures. <coughs> the acceleration of antimicrobial resistance due to the misuse and overuse of antimicrobial, and conversely, <coughs> there, there are no adequate alternative, and this entails preventing and controlling infection by taking steps at all levels of society to, redu to reduce impact and reduce the spread of resistance. Therefore, I would recommend the following. The first one, individuals. They must follow the doctor tips when using antimicrobial. Using only the antimicrobial when this breeds prescribed by a certified health doctors. Preventing Infection by regularly washing hands, preparing food properly, avoiding close contact, and keep taking vaccine. Second, the health physicians. Describe and distribute antimicrobial only when needed, in accordance with the approved guidelines. Reporting to the Ministry of Health any antimicrobial resistance infection. Preventing infection by ensuring clean hands, contributing to the cleanliness of equipment and devices. Talk to the patients about how to properly take antimicrobial, the problem of antimicrobial resistance, and the risks of misuse. Third, Ministry of Health. To strengthen policies and programs and implement infection prevention and control measures. Organizing and promoting the appropriate use of antimicrobial. And provide information on the impact of antimicrobial resistance and improve control of antimicrobial resistant infection. Finally, health industry sector to find the new antimicrobial vaccines and improve diagnostic methods. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Aya, for this lovely presentation. Uh, 
now we have uh, some time for discussion. We have uh, two questions. Uh, we have a question to Dr. Aya from Dr. Nasser, and he's asking, uh, are the samples different when you compare before and after the samples, uh, especially when you are speaking about, yeah, uh, thank you for, when comparing before and after marsh of return sampling, were also taken from wound and pus similarly, or, or they were taken from different sites? Thank you, Dr. Hamis, and thank you for you all. Uh, the sample um, were taken from uh, different sites. Um, before the great return of March, the patient uh, uh, were uh, have an infect bacterial infection. But after the great return of March, we, we, we take the casualty of from the great return of March. If we have a wound uh, infection, we we take the swab from it from different sides, even from hand, uh, leg, um, from different sides, and it has been compared between them before and after. We we show we showed that the, we have increased antimicrobial resistance after the Great Britain March. We in, um, um, we asked the, the 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 laboratory uh, to uh, make a different test to ensure that if there is an increase in uh, antimicrobial resistance through the sensitivity test. Okay. Okay, let me ask another question. Uh, do you think that uh, not having a unified medical record system here in the Gaza Strip and uh, different healthcare providers like international organizations, WHO, Medicine San Frontier, Minister of Health, uh, Medical Relief, others, and all of these partners or uh, uh, healthcare providers are providing healthcare for free for those patients. Do you think these health services, when provided for free and from different healthcare sectors and without unified medical records, has complicated the issue of antimicrobial resistance? Sure. The limited resources of uh, care of healthcare here in Gaza and the limited uh, antimicrobial agents that we do uh, the test on it, on it complicated the recorded the appropriate recorded of the result, and that will be difficult to, uh, to, to us to know how much the, incre the increasing re the, resist the antimicrobial resistance increased and how we can deal with that. Okay. Okay, let me see if we have more questions. Yeah, I think we have a question. Do we have Dr. Najla with us? Do we have Dr. Najla with us? Unfortunately not, she's not here. She wasn't able to join. Mm. Okay, well, because uh, I, I had a question here. First, I'd like also to thank her supervisor, Dr. Fadal Naim, who is also an orthopedic surgeon and he has been uh, involved a lot with uh, uh, many orthopedic injuries of great martial return and also other partners in this research. But one thing that worth noticing is that uh, around 80% of injuries in the, her, one of her slides were shown to be in the lower limb. 
And another study showed that more than 55% of all injuries were tackling uh, or, or targeting the lower limbs, especially the patella, meaning to say that these injuries were intentional to cause long-term injury or long-term disability because many of those people who were injured are now living with long-lasting disability, unfortunately. So that's good that now we don't have much injuries from Great March of Return, uh, especially over the last uh, 2020 year. But uh, it is also thought that uh, when, if this siege is not broken on Gaza, there are some rumors that this uh, Great March of Return will continue again and we will start. If there are no other questions, so I say thank you and thank you for our speakers and for our listeners. And I hand now over for the session to our moderators. Thank you very much.